I will talk about uh, something that I think fascinates everyone, money. Um, we all like it, especially when we have it, perhaps not always when we need to pay others. Um, I would argue that perhaps money is one of the most important inventions in the history of mankind. I cannot prove that, I will not tr even try, but I think money is the reason why many things look like they do today in our society. And it's a social invention, very successful, and one of the forms that has been dominating our societies is cash. Cash is one form of money, not the only one, but the most important one. Now we see that um, in Sweden, cash is decreasing. The use of cash is decreasing. We use less and less cash, and we're even starting to think that we may see a cashless society in a couple of years or decades. And that is what I will talk about. Uh, my name is Niklas Arvidsson. I work here at the um, uh, INDEC at KTH. Uh, we're doing research on how things shape uh, our society, how innovation shape industries and change things. And I have been for the last 10 years looking at the payment system where uh, cash is one important issue, of course. Uh, Sweden is a bit unique, it's important to say that. We use very little cash and it's actually decreasing quite rapidly. If we look at international comparisons, uh, Sweden stand out. These graphs, starting from 2002, show how the value of cash in circulation has developed in different countries. And we see on the top we have Brazil, where the value of cash in circulation has been increasing quite a lot, about uh, seven times as much since 2002. Here at the bottom, we see Sweden, the blue line. Sweden is actually the only country, to my knowledge, where the value of cash in circulation decreases. And this is quite unique. We have some other countries, like, for instance, Denmark, this orange line, and Japan, where it stands rather still. Um, but Sweden is the only country where the value of cash circulation decreases. And this makes Sweden a bit unique. And this is an indication that we're moving towards a cashless society. Uh, we have been living in a cash age for many, many years. The Swedish Central Bank, the Riksbank, was one of the first, or perhaps the first, to launch cash as we know it today. Uh, paper and uh, metal money backed by a central bank and in the end the state. This was done in 1668. Now we see that in Sweden, I would argue, we had a peak of cash in December 2007. In Sweden, wages and salaries are paid about the 25th of each month. And that's where people get their uh, accounts refilled by money from their employers. And during this year, Christmas was coming up and the wages were paid out on this date. And we know what happens in Christmas, parents buy presents for the kids. So this was the time when they went to the ATMs, withdraw the cash, and before they actually spent it, pay, uh, buying gifts, presents to the kids. So the peak, I would argue, is December 21, 2007, that was when the cash in circulation was, was at the highest uh, point in Sweden. And we see what happens, has happened since then. It has been decreasing. These graphs show the, the blue line here shows the same thing, uh, but a longer time scale from 1950 to 2016. And again, we see the blue line showing how value of cash in circulation has been developing with the peak in 2007. The red line shows an important indicator, and that is cash in circulation divided by GDP. That is often used when we compare different countries. And that, of course, depends on the growth of cash, but also the growth of GDP. And usually you would expect GDP to grow more faster than cash in circulation, 
and this line would decrease. So the red line, you will see similar patterns in different countries. But the blue line, the decrease of actual uh, value of cash circulation is unique for Sweden, as I said. And how do we explain this? Well, it's a long story. It started in the 1960s, where uh, banks had developed IT infrastructure, previous, early, uh, early kinds, um, but it was there, and they uh, wanted customers, of course. So they started to talk with companies, saying that why not paying out wages and salaries directly into bank accounts instead of in cash? It was quite smart. They got new customers, the companies liked it, it was easier for companies. The employees and the unions liked it. It was quite good for them too, with one important condition, that the banks should not charge the consumers when they withdraw their wages from banks. That was fine with banks, because they got new customers into the systems and then they could sell other things to these consumers. And the bank accounts are still the backbone of the payment system. In the 90s, we introduced card payments, or late 80s, and also phased out checks with fees for checks. Checks are basically not used at all in Sweden today. And the card payment infrastructure is still the most important payment uh, scheme when we talk about retail payments. Low value, high volume payments. Uh, then, of course, around 2000, we had the IT hype, uh, the millennium. Uh, there was a lot of talk about mobile payments, new forms of payments, but mainly talk, not that much really happened. Then we had around 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9 even, uh, we had actually a large uh, amount of robberies in Sweden. Banks were robbed, small merchants were robbed, uh, buses were robbed, we had some spectacular robberies like the helicopter robbery, so now it's shown on TV and there will be movies about it. And this was, of course, horrible for the people working in these companies. So the union started to say that, well, why should we have cash? Maybe we should get rid of cash because it's not safe for our people to work when they get robbed, when they have guns up in their faces. So they started a big lobbying campaign from a work environment perspective. And the public transportation sector was actually the first to say that you cannot use cash on buses. Then we have tax incentives. Uh, the tax authorities wanted to get rid of some black money in, in the construction industry, household services. We had new incentives for those that used to use cash as a way to get paid to start getting paid through invoice or other forms and actually also declare that money properly. We had a cash register law, which meant that merchants had to improve their cash register systems. So it made it more difficult for, for merchants to, to have sort of a side cash register with money they didn't declare. Again, tax authorities wanted to get rid of some gray or black money. And this made increased or decreased the use of cash. Then we had a... Um, Around 2012, a great scandal actually, one company that uh, supplied cash in transit service companies, companies that go to merchants, collect their cash, and then transport it to a bank. Uh, one of them actually did some bad things. Um, this led some, some of the people in this company actually uh, went to jail. And what it meant for merchants was that they, some of them lost a lot of money, several hundred million Swedish crowns. And there was a general feeling from merchants that maybe we shouldn't, we can't trust the cash system. Maybe it's better to think about having electronic payments and not cash. There are risks associated with it. When this company went bankrupt, there were fewer suppliers of these services, which meant that the fees for cash handling services actually increased. Another negative incentive to actually allow cash for a merchant. We had a lot of new services, of course, that can replace cash. Swish is one very important and um, successful one, but we have others. Uh, iSettle have services, we have Klarna, we have a lot of new actors, Seamless, um, many others that supply services that can be used as substitute to cash. Banks also see that 
coming back to what the agreement from the 1960s, banks don't have any fees connected to cash. So for them, cash is really a loss. So they actually stopped providing cash handling services at many of their bank uh, offices, retail offices. Now, perhaps 55, 60% of the bank retail offices do not provide cash handling services. It makes it more difficult to, for a merchant to deposit cash and for uh, people to withdraw cash. Which le also leads to problems. Now we see that uh, access, access to basic payment services becomes a problem for some groups in our society. Elderly people, people with disabilities, maybe immigrants. Uh, small merchants in rural areas see more and more problems of handling cash. Uh, so there are problems that rise because of this development. Which also has led to uh, cash rebellion. Actually, a, a movement that starts to talk with politicians, say that, okay, we need to uh, perhaps not stop this development, we need to handle it in a better way. Some groups in society may still depend on cash, and some merchants will still like to have cash. There's also companies, of course, that are interested in providing cash and services connected to cash. Paradoxically, now, when cash is almost disappearing, we have new bills and coins. A decision was made in 2008, just about when the peak of cash was, to introduce new bills and coins in Sweden, mainly for the reducing the risk of forged cash. And this happens now, 2015 to 17. And somewhat paradox paradoxically, it seemed to have led to a situation where many do not adopt the new bills and coins, but instead use mobile payment services or other kinds of payment services. Today, um, the value of cash circulation is somewhere around 48 billion Swedish crowns, which is a little bit over 1% of GDP, the lowest in the, in the world, I think. What's dominating then is card payment. In, in innovation research, we talk about dominant design about technological regimes, the technological systems that dominate an industry. When we talk about retail payments, it's the card payments. And cards is, of course, it's a piece of plastic, but it's so much more than that. And the things behind that, the systems for making card payments, card transaction happen with banks, acquiring banks, issuing banks, those that provide the schemes behind it, the way merchants use and pay for these services, how we as consumers can have cards and pay with them, is really a strong dominant design. About 70% of, of payments in, in retail stores are made by cards. This is a recent study I do with two colleagues, from, one from Copenhagen Business School, and one from the Central Bank of Sweden. Uh, and debit cards is dominating that part. Um, we see that about 18% of the payments are in cash, about 10% is invoices, and interestingly, mobile payments is almost nothing, half a percent or something. So mobile payments connected to merchants is very low. It has been more successful with person-to-person -person payments, which I'll show soon. So cars is a dominant design. Um, if we think about development and what drives that and, and what are the challenges, I gave an overview picture before, but then I'll also sort of point to some important things here. One thing is the law. Again, here Sweden is a bit uh, unique. There are two important laws here or, or parts of the legal framework that that matter. One is the central bank law, and that is says that cash is legal tender. In Sweden, you should accept cash, Swedish crowns, uh, when you accept the payment. That law is basically the same in every country uh, where cash exists. But then we also have commercial law, and that basically says that if two parties, a consumer and a merchant, enters an agreement saying that when this consumer pay the merchant, that person should not use cash. 
If they make that kind of agreement, then that overrules the cash or the uh, central bank law. So in practice, it means that if a store has a sign saying that we do not accept cash, and you enter the store and want to buy something, you're assumed to have entered this legal agreement with the store and not use cash. So the commercial law takes precedency over the central bank law. And it's okay for a merchant to say no to cash. You don't see that in many other countries, but in Sweden. And this is the reason why it can happen, why merchants say no to cash. Why, an important reason why it's decreasing so quickly. Uh, another thing is Swish. And uh, I don't know if banks are superstitious or not, but it was launched the 12th month, uh, 12th day of the 12th month, 2012, 12 minutes past 12, they launched, this bank launched a service called Swish. Um, the major banks in Sweden. And what this service does is that it basically connects your mobile phone number to your bank account. And through that, you can make a transaction, moving money from one bank account to another in real time. About the same time it takes to hand over cash which means that this is a direct substitute to cash. It has the functionality of cash, but it's a mobile payment. And this has been very successful. It has a slow start, but now about 70% of people over 15 are using it. And it has a volume which is about 20% of card payments, which is very high. It's not a commercial success yet for the banks, but it really has hit, hit um, the market well and replaced cash. Uh, we also, in this study, we've asked merchants, when will you stop accepting cash? Because that is a critical question if we want to understand the future. And merchants play an important role here. About one quarter of them say that we will stop by 2020. That's two years from now. Another quarter says we'll stop by 2025. So about half of the Swedish merchants will stop accepting cash by 2025. A sixth said by 2030. So two thirds by 2030 will say, no, we don't accept cash anymore. And this was an open question, so they could set any time and date they wanted. This is a strong indication, at least to me, that this development will even uh, step up in, in speed. And we think this is when the first group start to say no to cash, it will be easier for the next one to do it. And it might sort of be a contagious process, a vicious or virtuous circle, depending on what you think about cash, that will speed up the process. If this development continues, the decrease of the use of cash, merchants saying no to cash, and we also ca calculated at what sales volume is it not profitable for a merchant to say yes to cash anymore? And that, for the average merchants, is about 5%. If 5% of a merchant's sales is done by cash, on average, with an average profitability level, it will not be profitable for them to accept that. Or, more clearly, the cost of cash services will sort of be equal to the profit from those sales. And that point, given the present uh, development, will happen in, well, March 24, 2023. So that may date may be a situation, a day when we're practically cashless. Cash will still be here. It will be here for a long time. But um, it will be practically very, uh, not that important. Uh, we see problems rising. I said that before, more regions in Sweden, where problems actually increase due to the lack of cash. We also see that the central bank are thinking about substitutes. They think about developing what they call an e-krona, a central bank digital currency that could replace cash. This is really interesting and important. We could see other versions also. We talk about digital currencies, virtual currencies. This could be one provided by the central bank that could Perhaps be a complement or a substitute to cash. This is something to follow, see what happens. 
So to sum this up, um, the, the decrease of cash is, in Sweden is fast. We're quite unique. Uh, it's very much driven by low demand from consumers, but also, of course, from banks and merchants. Card payments are dominating. About half of the merchants in Sweden will say no to cash by 2025, according to this study. And if this development continue, it may be the case that in, in 2023, it's not economically viable for merchants to say yes to cash anymore. And that this creates problems, especially for elderly people, disabled people, immigrants, and merchants in rural areas. And we see that mobile payment services, digital currencies, perhaps provided by a central bank, really good substitute to cash that could, could lead to the final end of cash as we know it, maybe in our lifetime. Thank you very much.